Michael from CTW here, and we wanted to share some information with you that we often run into. Customer asked us to upgrade their machine. This is a competitor's machine. Put our software on it, our signal conditioning, our sensors, and uh, turn it into a variable speed machine. And we did that. Everything worked out well. Machine run well. Uh, pretty proud of it overall. But one of the things we find is that competitors might not look in areas that we would. For instance, mechanical stiffness. We should all know that if the machine isn't stiff enough, not only are we measuring the damper, but we're measuring that as well. So we wanted to show you what we, uh, what we mean by that, what CTW does to make the machine very stiff so you have a good platform, and uh, just give you a little more insight. So, I'm gonna open this up. I'm going to show you what we're talking about. So, this is their yoke, the Scotch yoke mechanism. The, uh, the motor turns, it goes, uh, rotates, and provides a linear motion here. What you notice, though, is a very, very small bearing. That is all that there is that is creating linear motion. And not only is it small, but it's round, which means the contact is a point contact. Now we know from history that that is not a good way to do this over time. It wears out much quicker and you simply cannot take up the mechanical slop that you would otherwise. You see some small shaft and uh, overall, it's just not a very stiff system. And we see that in the data and we'll show you that in a minute. What uh, do a little comparison of is this is a CTW yoke. You can see it's quite a bit bigger, quite a bit stiffer, more material, more mass, but we've done the work, we've done the FEA, and we know that this is what we need to do in order to get a true reading on your damper and not just the machine. Another thing we have, as you can see, the size of our bearing. So the bearing's bigger, and you notice it's flat. That way we get a better distribution of force as we slide across. It helps for long-term wear. And if you've ever taken a CTW dyno apart, you take this cam fuller out, you realize there's a little bit of preload in there. Because it's such a nice system, the, air, the force is spread out, we can actually take, uh, get a little preload in there so we get rid of any last bit of mechanical slot. So now let's show you on the graph what we're talking about. So come over here and what we've done and we do this for every dyno we sell every dyno that we would upgrade for a competitor uh, we run the same damper same stroke same velocities all the time so that we can compare dyno to dyno to dyno and here we have the same shock run on the competitor dyno and the shock run on one of uh, CTW dyno I'm going to show you this is what it looks like on the competitor's dyno. It's, uh, it's a linear digressive piston, and you can see there's an amount of hysteresis, which not really worried about the amount of hysteresis, but when we put our file on there, this black one, you can see there's quite a bit of difference in that low speed area. So basically as it's deaccelerating and accelerating through top dead center and bottom dead center, there's a huge difference. That difference is all mechanical issues. So the CTW dyno, we remove the mechanical looseness. So we're measuring more of what the damper is really doing. This other dyno, you have a lot of other things going on. Now, you will notice that once it goes beyond about two inches per second, it's the same. So the calibration, the load cell calibration, the displacement calibration is perfect. It's just as you get closer to where it counts where the forces are going through zero, there's a big difference. That's what we found over the years, and we work very hard to make sure that goes away. Another thing is, I'm, uh, I'm aware that this dyno is really used, customers just doing peak velocity testing. So all they're seeing is points at the peak velocity. In that case, you'll never see this. But if you ever start to look at the individual speeds, this is where the problem rises. So, just so you know, CTW, we look and, and work very hard to get rid of that, to make the machines as stiff as possible, so you're really measuring the damper. 
that's pretty important we found. So here is the full system on an actual CTW dyno. You can see we have larger guide rods. We have a, our big bearing, nice custom designed uh, plates. And another thing you're gonna notice is our displacement sensor is measured right on the center. Now, a lot of dynos out there where the sensors are outboard. Any kind of slop, any kind of movement, the bearings wearing out, will start to rock the yoke as this is rotating. You have your sensors outboard, it just amplifies that movement. That's why we went to a center mounted displacement sensor so that we can help get rid of that issue and keep measuring specifically the damper. So there you go, CTW, a little, little information. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and YouTube.